Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that we can name our polygons from three sides through 12. Notice 11 was left off the list. Anything past 12 is named by the number of sides. You just say it's a 13 a gon, a 14 a gon, a 15 a gon. Even the 11 sided figure we call an 11 a gon. Three sides, what do we call it? Triangle. Four sides. Ah, be careful. It is a quadrilateral, and I'm telling you why we're working on polygons. We are going to spend most of our time talking about quadrilaterals because there's so many different classifications and they all have different properties. Five sides. Pentagon. Six sides. Hexagon. Seven. It is a heptagon. Eight. Nine. It's a nonagon. Ten. Decagon. Twelve. is a dodecagon. The reason the names are important is it's likely that you'd get a question that said, what is the sum of the interior angles of a dodecagon? If you don't know that a dodecagon has 12 sides, you're not going to be able to answer the question. So it's just another one of those times where if you don't know the vocabulary, if you don't know how many sides a figure has, there are going to be some questions that you run into that you can't answer. Okay. Most of these you should be familiar with. The ones that I found that people have difficulty with in the past are these three. Most everybody else knows the other ones. And the four-sided figure a lot of people misname because they think of one of the many different quadrilaterals that we deal with. Okay? Questions about the sides of naming a polygon. And again, anything after 12, we just name it with the number of sides. A diagonal in a polygon is drawn from one vertex to another. So from A to C, from D to B, in this picture, are both diagonals. It says if we draw all the possible diagonals from one vertex of a convex <coughs> polygon. What does convex mean? Do we all know the difference? Okay. Convex means that everything is kind of pushed to the outside. Concave means that something is pushed kind of to the inside. And the rule would be, if you draw a line that contains one of the sides, if it's concave, part of that line will pass through the interior of the polygon. If it's convex, no matter what side I draw a line, none of it passes through the interior. So this is convex. And this is concave. 
And this is kind of what I always think of. Because a cave goes what? In. in. Questions about the difference between convex and concave. If it's concave, if you draw a line containing the side, part of that line will pass through the interior of the polygon. If it's convex, it will never pass through the interior. Okay. So it says if we draw a diagonal from one vertex of a convex polygon, it divides the polygon into triangles. So if I drew a three-sided figure, a triangle, and I tried to draw the diagonals, would there be any diagonals to draw? Actually goes to the sides, right? And how many triangles are created? Just what? Just the one that's the original one. If I start at one vertex on a quadrilateral and I draw in the diagonals, how many triangles are created? Two. two. So there's two triangles, so there'd be two times 180 degrees or 360 degrees on the interior of a quadrilateral. If I had a pentagon, and I picked one diagonal and I, one vertex, and I drew in the diagonals. How many triangles? There's three created. So I'd take three times 180, which is 540 degrees inside of a pentagon. If it was a hexagon, how many triangles are created? Four. And they're 180 degrees a piece for a total of? 720 degrees. So, rather than have to draw in the triangles to calculate this, there is a formula. It says you take 180 times n minus 2 where n represents the number of sides. And if you take a look at the pictures that we had, if it had three sides, we could only get one triangle. So three minus two became one, one times 180. If it had four sides, four minus two would be Two, that's how many triangles it's going to create, and you can see that that pattern would continue. Everybody okay so far? So, what is the sum of the interior angles of a nonagon? How many sides does a nonagon have? How many sides? Nine. So I'm going to take 180 times 9 minus 2, or 180 times 7. And when I take 180 times 7, I get 1,260 degrees. A convex polygon has an interior angle sum of 1620. How many sides does it have? This is one of those times where if you know the formula, looks like this. That you can replace the formula with the part that you have. What property would allow me to replace this S with 1620? Anybody know? Somebody said it. Substitution. Okay. 
If I know that the sum of the angles is 1620, I can replace the sum of the angles with 1620. Now, there's a couple different ways that I could approach this. I could actually distribute the 180, but in this case, it's easier right now to do what? Go ahead and divide by 180 and get rid of it. It'll leave n minus 2 on this side. And if I take 1620 and divide it by 180, it's actually going to give me 9. And what am I going to do to get n by itself? I'm going to add 2. And I'm going to find out that this polygon had 11 sides. And what would we call it? An 11 agon. And it doesn't matter whether you write the formula n minus 2 parentheses 180 or you put this 180 out in front. If it is a regular polygon, to be regular, all the sides are congruent and all the angles are congruent. When we think of a pentagon, we typically think of a regular pentagon. When we think of a hexagon, we typically think of a regular one. That's how we're used to seeing them drawn. But the sides don't necessarily have to be the same. It doesn't have to be a regular hexagon. If you want to find one angle in a regular polygon, you use n minus 2 times 180 over n. If all the angles are the same, then you can divide it by the number of sides that it has, and it'll give you the value of each individual angle. So here it says a regular polygon has an interior angle of 135 degrees. This is another one that's just driven by this formula. I'm going to take this one angle that's here, and I'm going to replace it with what? 135. So I'm going to write 135 equals n minus 2 times 180 over n. What am I going to do next? How do we solve when there's a variable in the denominator? Well, just like any fraction, do we want to work with a fraction? How would I get rid of an n if it's in the denominator? Multiply by what? So I'm going to multiply both sides by n so that I can get rid of it. I now have 135n. These n's have canceled out. What can I do with this 180? What can I do with it? I'm going to distribute it. So I have 180n minus 360. And from this point, it should be relatively easy to solve. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 180n from both sides. And it's going to leave me with a negative 45n is equal to a negative 360. And I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 45. So n is going to be equal to 8. What type of polygon is this? This is an octagon.
questions on example three. Can I go forward? Here they're asking me to find the missing angle measurement. And the interior angles of a polygon change depending upon how many sides that it has. Unlike a triangle where I could just add all three of them together and I knew it was going to be how much? 180. When you're dealing with a polygon, we have to figure out how much is on the inside. Some of them you're going to memorize real quick. You probably already know what's in a quadrilateral. How much is it? 360. If you don't know, plug it into the formula. 180 times 4 minus 2. It is 360 degrees. So I know when I go all the way around the inside of this polygon and I add all the pieces together, 93, 88, 42, and the X, it should be equal to 360 degrees. Ninety-three, eighty-eight, and forty-two is a total of 223. And I would subtract that 223 from both sides. Over the years that I've been doing this, I get a lot of people that ask me, well, can I just add all these together and subtract them from 360? The answer is, absolutely. Why would I take the time to write it out this way? And I can tell you, go ahead. It does help you memorize the formula. And there is another reason that I write it out. Sometimes 93... 88 and 42, they don't give you nice numbers to put in there. Those are also algebraic. This might be x minus 5. This one might be x plus 12. So if you don't know that you've got to add the, all the pieces together, if all you're thinking is, well, I'm just going to add up what's there and subtract it from 360, then you don't know how to process when it looks in a different form. Everybody good so far? This is a prime example why we do it the other way, where we add all the pieces together and set it what it's equal to. Now, what's the interior of this one going to be? Do we know yet? How would I find out? 180 times 6 minus 2. And what is it? 720? So I know that when I go all the way around the inside and I add this one up, it should equal 720 degrees. So that's what we're going to do. 4x 4x 3x minus 10, 3x minus 20, 2x plus 10, 2x plus 20, all this is equal to 720 degrees.
By the way, I see a minus 20 and a positive 20. I see a negative 10 and a positive 10. So the numbers have basically canceled each other out. 4x and 4x is, and 3 more is, and 3 more is, and 4 more is. So I have a total of 18x is equal to 720. And I'm going to divide by 18. x equals 40. Am I finished? Why not? Because they asked me to find what? The missing angles. So when I plug it in here, this angle is going to be 160. This angle is going to be 160. This one is going to be 110. This one's going to be 100. And 90 and 100. And when I go around the outside of this again, where I just wrote these numbers in, 100, the 90, the 100, the 110, and the two 160s, when I add those all together, what should they equal? 720. Questions on this example? Can I go forward? An exterior angle of a polygon is just like an exterior angle of a triangle. It is formed by extending the side out. So this angle right here is an exterior angle. And if you go all the way and you extend each one of the sides, in a triangle it's going to create three exterior angles. Why would I know that this exterior angle is 120 if the inside was 60? It's got to be equal to 180 because it's a linear pair. Likewise, if I extend each one of the sides in a quadrilateral, how many exterior angles are created? Four. And if you'll notice, 120 plus 120 plus 120 is 360. 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90 is 360. 72, 72, 72, 72, and 72 is 360. So the exterior angle sum of a polygon, they always add up to 360 degrees. It's not a formula, it's just numeric. Everybody good? So, if the exterior sum is always 360, to find one exterior angle in a regular polygon, you would take 360 and divide it by n. This would give you one angle. Example six, find a measure of an exterior angle. It's not asking for a sum, it's asking for one angle of a regular octagon. So I'm going to take 360 and divide it by what number? In this case, n is going to be eight because we're talking about an octagon. And 360 divided by eight would be 45 degrees. What do you notice about the exterior angle as the number of sides goes up? 
it gets smaller and smaller. Find the measure of an exterior angle of a regular poly, uh, pentagon. So this would be 360 divided by 5. And this would be 72 degrees. Questions here. The opposite is also true. If they give me the measure of an exterior angle, so they're telling me the measure of an exterior angle is 24. Remember that one angle is equal to 360 divided by n. What can I replace this one angle with? 24. What would I do to solve this? First thing I'm going to do is multiply by n. I'm now going to have 24n equals 360. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 24, and n would be 15. And what would we call this figure? A 15 agon. It doesn't have a special name for us. It does, but we just don't learn them past 12. Everybody good?